The following is a sponsored program paid for by First Alliance Credit Union. Welcome to Good Money Moves featuring Jenna Tobel from First Alliance Credit Union and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. It's time for Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell, News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Along with Jenna Tobel, the Director of Brand and Digital Member Experience with First Alliance Credit Union. How's it going, Jenna? Oh, it's going good, Andy. How are you? Doing well. Excellent. Last week, we talked about the budget for our vacation or mm-hmm. vacations, if you're lucky. Yes. What's the Good Money Moves topic for today? Well, we're going to talk a little bit today about home buying, right? It's spring finally, and this is the time of year where a lot of people start to think about buying a home, often for the first time. Um, And with that in mind, I thought it would be a great time for us to go over some of the common mistakes that people make when they buy, start the home buying process or um, just have purchased their first home and these mistakes can cost you a lot of money, either in terms of overpaying for a house or even stopping you potentially from getting the house that you really want. Um, but luckily, uh, once you've been made aware of these mistakes, they're actually very easy to avoid. And so we're going to kind of go through what are some of those home common home buying mistakes that you can avoid if you are starting your home buying journey. Awesome. The best kind of mistakes, right? Easily avoided if you know yes. about them. Yes. And this is the perfect time to discuss this. The spring market is always, always hot out there. Yeah. And of course, it's the market's been crazy for years now as well. It has. Okay. Let's start the process. What are the first mistakes we should be avoiding? Yeah. So the first mistake that you can avoid is around not knowing how much home you can actually afford. Right. So we've all dreamed about owning this really nice home. You know, maybe it's a big acreage or maybe it's a giant mansion, you know, whatever your dream home is. We've all kind of had that desire from time to time. So, however, it's really important that as you go into this home buying process, especially if this is your first time, you want to make sure to really set your expectations to match reality. And the best way to do that is to figure out how much home you can actually afford based on your budget today. And that doesn't just include the down payment for a mortgage and the mortgage payments, but it also includes thinking about the heating bills and the electrical bills that would go into basic utility and upkeep of that home, right? If the bigger the house... It, well, that too, but you even think about the bigger the house, the more square footage you have to oh, keep yeah. cool. Can you afford to do that? You might be able to afford the mortgage payment on it, but then can you truly afford to heat and cool that home? Can you afford the property taxes that come along with a home that size? These are all the types of things that when we talk about how much home can you afford, that's part of that consideration. Um, and if you keep looking at more expensive homes on the market, you're going to be tempted you know, to potentially even buy one that's out of your price range because of these things. And, you know, that can lead you to either trying to buy a home that truly is out of your price range, or you're going to leave the whole experience feeling a little bit disappointed with the options that you actually can afford. So again, when you start your house search, you know, start by looking at the lowest end of your price range and then gradually move higher into that range if if you're really truly not finding anything that's going to fit the bill for you and your family in that lower end. Um, and if you find a home that you love near the lower end of your price range, then you don't have to start looking at more expensive houses. And that means that you'll save yourself from unnecessary expenses and also not open yourself up to temptation to look at those more expensive options because it's really, really easy to think, oh, I can, you know, I can afford another $10,000 on my right. mortgage. That's not a big, that's only another $100 a month or another $50 a month. I can do that. And pretty soon you've kind of inched your way into really possibly squeezing yourself too thin uh, from a budgetary standpoint. So, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that you should never look at expensive houses, especially if you have a decent sized budget and you've been pre-approved for a, a decent sized mortgage. Like you, 
it's okay to look at that stuff. I'm not telling you, you can't, it's okay to dream. And if you really do want that more expensive house, cause that's the one that's going to fit the bill for what you're looking for and hoping for with your finances, what you can make work. There are ways to take steps to figure out how you can truly t- afford that home and still be within budget. But, you know, at the end of the day, you really just need to make sure that you go into the process with really realistic expectations. Yeah. There, there's a term we used to use for it, home rich or house rich. Yes. They go visit this beautiful home. <laughs> there's no window coverings, very, mm-hmm. very little furniture. Uh, because guess what? It was not realistic for these folks to own this home and they're just trying to scrape by and make the mortgage payments and the interest payments so they don't lose the home. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's the fun in that? Exactly. Yeah. You want to be able to make it feel like a home once you move in and have all the, you know, decorate it how you want, be able to maintain and upkeep the home appropriately. Those are, you know, that's a, that's a really great point, Andy. And a lot of people I think run into that more often than not where they realize, Oh, I've, all my money's going into just having the four walls and yeah. I don't have anything left to make it my own. And plus those, guess what? Taxes go up every year. Eh, yes, try, yes yeah. they do. And insurance usually does as well. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> get ready though for those, your mortgage may stay the same, but those expenses will get more expensive. Exactly. Exactly. So what are some of the other mistakes out there that we should be avoiding? Yeah. So another one, I kind of alluded to this just a moment ago, but a a common mistake that especially first time home buyers get into is not taking the time to get pre-approved for a mortgage loan before they even start looking for a home. Um, Getting pre-approved is actually a very important part of the home buying process. It really lets you know how much money a financial institution is willing to lend to you. And not to mention, it will also outline the conditions of the loan, such as the payment amount that you could afford, the interest rate you're likely to receive, and really how much you can truly borrow. So if you, without getting pre-approved first, you really can't even make an offer on a house realistically. So getting pre-approved is gonna help you figure out just how much you can afford, which is gonna play a big role in helping you avoid that first (laughs) thing that we talked about. And that is getting yourself into a situation where you have more house than you can actually afford. Um, You know, another reason that getting pre-approved first is that a lot of realtors They're not even going to work with you unless you've been pre-approved for mortgage because it shows that you are a serious buyer. Um, So if if you have not been pre-approved first and you're starting to think, oh, I should reach out to a real estate agent, get pre-approved for a mortgage first. Find out if you even can qualify and what those terms look like, because then the realtor can take that information and help you start finding homes in the market that match those expectations from the lender. So, and on top of that, it also gives the sellers confidence that if you, when you do make an offer that you're a serious buyer as well. And sellers tend to favor buyers with pre-approvals and financing already lined up over someone who doesn't. So in the marketplace that we're, we're still in, mm -hmm. but especially over the past couple of years, you were competing against people who are putting down cash offers. Some, yeah, sometimes. Can you, can you sometimes. imagine coming to a seller and saying, I'll pay you this much, but I still have to go line up a mortgage or I haven't been pre-approved and mm-hmm. you've been laughed out of the uh, out of yep. the process. Yeah, absolutely. The, you would be at the bottom of the list of people that they would accept an offer from. Absolutely. Yep. So what getting pre-approved in my mind and most people's mind in the real estate um, market is it's step number one you need to find out if you what you can afford and if you qualify for financing if you need financing to buy that home and the majority of people do so yeah and that doesn't necessarily lock you in on an interest rate either but it shows exactly. that that based upon your income and your mm-hmm. current living situation and the bills you owe now you could mm-hmm. realistically afford a house with this much of a mortgage exactly Exactly. Powerful information to have in your back pocket. That's for sure. It is. Okay. Well, we'll take our, we'll take a quick break. We're talking about 
home buying on good money moves. And we'll return in a moment with Jenna Tubble with First Alliance Credit Union on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. You. With Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell, Jenna Tobble with First Alliance Credit Union. The topic today is home buying mm-hmm. and mistakes that we can easily avoid. And uh, boy, having gone through this, if somebody had gone through a list of easily avoided mistakes, I would have loved that because even even when you know how to navigate it, you mm-hmm. still make mistakes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, what are some of those other mistakes that we could hopefully avoid easily. Yeah. So, you know, already in the show, we've really, we talked about setting your expectations for your budget, you know, getting pre-approved. So you really have a, a, a good solid understanding of what your budget can get you as far as a mortgage is concerned. And the next mistake, I guess, to try to avoid is getting so drawn into house that you start to overlook some of the flaws of that perspective home, right? So this is especially true if you're buying a home on like a tighter budget. So you might be tempted to get a fixer upper, right? There's all kinds of shows on TV these days where they make it just look so easy to (laughs) flip a house and fix it up and make it. But the reality of that situation is that most people they don't have the resources to truly flip a home or take a fixer upper and turn it into a family home. Um, yeah, so, I have, I, everybody's got a trailer loaded with $35,000 worth of tools. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Unless you are going into that fixer upper situation, knowing with contractors lined up and you've talked to the um bank or credit union that you're planning to get your mortgage through and you have specific loan terms that say, hey, this house is in need of some repair before we can move in. We need this much to make those repairs. And you've kind of looped them into the conversation. There are ways to go about it. um, But just buying a fixer upper with the idea that, oh, I'll just do this in a couple of weeks and it'll be fine. That's not again, not real expectations. Um, And the reason this is tempting for people is because those prices on those homes that need a lot of work do tend to be a lot lower. So you can get more house for your money if you're willing to put in the work. And again, there's nothing wrong with going that route. Just be very aware of what you're getting yourself into. Um, Because if you've never owned a home before, you probably truly don't know what you're getting yourself into. So you, and you don't want to be in a situation where you're biting off more than you can chew. So again, because those repairs that you need to make are probably going to cost you a lot more time and money than you ever could imagine. And if you're (laughs) hiring a professional to make those repairs for you, again, there's cost associated with that and time as well. So in the worst case scenario is that you've gutted a house that you intend to to rebuild and then you run out of money and now you have nowhere to live (laughs) because you can't make the repairs right so these are just some things to keep in mind as you're as you're entering the market and you know if you're trying to find a good deal on a house it's better to find something maybe mid-range in your budget that's ready to move in versus trying to find something at the low end just because you feel like you can do some work on it if you're an experienced contractor maybe you can handle that but most people probably are not in a good situation to take that on. You that, know, also, so, that also uh, underlines the importance of getting an inspection on that house. Exactly. To find that, out these sort of things. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You really do need that inspection and you do not want to skip that step at all. Right. If I mean, it. <laughs> It is so important. Yeah, it is so important. This this isn't in this community, but it is in the state. I know this person and they wanted this house so badly because guess what? It was on a lake. And I think it just completely blinded them to the potential flaws of the home. Mm -hmm. And they skipped a couple of important steps 
uh, to verify the home was what they thought they were getting. And guess what? Within a month after living in that house, the well went dry. Mm, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. A house without water is Not difficult any. to live in, to say the least. <laughs> and the cost of a new well is a lot. Yes. And oh, this, no. uh, these people had actually bought more than they, you know, could afford. They weren't being realistic. So it's a combination of almost everything we've talked about so far. Mm-hmm. A nightmare yeah. of unbelievable magnitude. Yeah. Yeah. A horrible situation to find yourself in. And there's yeah. such easy ways to avoid that. So Absolutely. as I said, it's not even hard to imagine. I've witnessed to people who have been over their heads in home repairs. Oh, yeah. So, uh, any other Absolutely. mistakes that we should be very wary of? Yeah, I think another important one in, is really avoid rushing in to make an offer too quickly. And this is especially an issue locally here for the past few years where homes that get put on the market tend to get sold really fast. and Really fast. Yeah. Really, yeah. Um, and if you rush to put an offer in, like you were saying, you might cut some corners and not take time to inspect that house as carefully as you should, right? And this mean could mean that you figure out too late that that house has those issues. And if you had just taken some time to slow down and, and go through the steps appropriately, you would have found those out. And those issues do usually add additional expenses. And depending on the severity of those issues, they can cost you thousands thousands of dollars that you did not anticipate and maybe don't even have the funds to cover and fix. And then you're in that situation, like you were just mentioning, Andy, where you have this house and yeah. you have no water or some, or, you know, or maybe heat. the, or the heat or the bad. roof collapses or, you know, who knows any manner cracks of things can happen. The foundation. Yes. That yeah. So one day we may produce a flood in your basement. Um, Yes. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. You get you could lie awake at night if you start really thinking about it. If yeah. you were to dive in there without an inspection to have a professional who can crawl around that roof and go up into the attic and look at the rafters, take a look at the furnace mm -hmm. to see if it's actually gonna keep running. Exactly. Um, every single aspect of that house they oh my gosh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yes. Because if you hire if you hire a good inspector, they will very they will notate all of the areas of concern and tell you whether or not it's a urgent concern a or you know on that spectrum is it something that should be taken care of immediately is it something that you, sh you should just watch and be aware of um and so they will do if you have a good inspector they will do a good job detailing those different things out for you and to help you know what you're getting into it doesn't it, it if you do have some serious issues that need to be addressed in a home, it's it doesn't mean you can't buy the house. It just means have a contingency plan for how to address those as right. quickly as possible. Yeah, the the inspector says, you know what? Within five years, you're going to need a new roof. Yeah. Start planning for it. Yep. Okay. Yep. We're talking about mistakes to avoid in buying a home on Good Money Moves. Back in a moment. News Talk 1340, AROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Win Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Good Money Moves. Mistakes in buying a home is the topic. And I'm chuckling because during the last two segments, we've identified an awful lot of easily avoidable mistakes. And I suspect that you're, you're going to have some more for us, Jenna. Do you have any final mistakes that we can uh, hopefully avoid pitfalls if you're looking <laughs> to buy a home? Yeah. So right before the break, we talked about rushing in to make an offer and not doing your due diligence. But on the flip side of that, another mistake you can make is waiting too long to make an offer on a home. Right. And you don't want to rush, but you also can't wait too long, especially in today's <laughs> market. Like 
If you wait too long to buy a home, you're going to discover that somebody else has already put an offer in before you and that thing is going to be gone. However, you might also be wondering, well, if you can't rush to put in an offer and you can't wait too long to make an offer, when do you make the offer? Well, yeah, Jana, when? <laughs> there is no hard and fast rule, mind you, about any of this. A lot of the process of buying a home is is definitely a balancing act and kind of trusting your gut and also doing your due diligence along the way. So the really the best advice that I can offer you is just be prepared beforehand. And that means, again, we talked about getting pre-approved for that mortgage before you even talk to a realtor. Um, but this also means having a checklist of things that you want to investigate once you find a home that you like. So things like, you know, the surrounding neighborhood. Spend some time outside of the house that you're considering buying. What is is there safety issues you need to worry about if you have kids? What's the noise levels? Is there potential um, areas nearby that are going to be developed soon. So maybe there'll be a lot of construction noise in the neighborhood soon, or there's certain zoning laws. Um, so really whether, even whether home values might be rising or falling in that neighborhood, how busy are the roads that you're going to live nearby? This one in particular took me by surprise when I moved into my house. I thought I was buying a house on a quiet side street. Come to find out that it's actually a main way people get to the nearby park. Oh. So my, yeah. So these are just some things to kind of, that you can look at, um, but on top of that, even looking at any obvious issues with the home, kind of have a checklist of things that are a no-go or things that you feel confident you can fix um, either on your own or if you do need to replace a new roof, or are you going to have enough money after you buy the home to do that? Um, and then really whether or not you can even see yourself in the home. Sometimes you step into a house when you're house hunting and you go, this is just not my vibe. I would I don't fit here. And you know that right away. Other times you're like, oh, wow, I can really see myself and my family living here. So those are some things to make sure you feel comfortable in this space. And, you know, think about, too, what changes you want to make to the house, whether you have, again, the skills or finances to do so. Yeah, if you start walking around and say, oh, you know, all we'd have to do is remove that wall. And this space would be just wide open and just gorgeous. yeah. Well, it could be a removing, load-bearing wall. Yeah. Removing walls is not a small job, just no. FYI. They make it no. look easy on the TV shows, but it is a job no. and a half. <laughs> I, I've done it. We've done it. And, yeah, it's – no, it's not easy at all. It's all and, it, and, actually, it's always even way high – more even if you have a plan, you end up finding things while doing it that make it even more difficult. Yes. Unanticipated things. But also, I've heard one, too uh, – try is uh, maybe talk to one of the people living in one of the neighboring homes if you're lucky enough to run into them outside. Exactly, yeah. Chat Talking them up a little the bit. Neighbors. Yeah, get to know the people that live in the in the neighborhood a little yeah. bit. Great. Great idea. And, uh, and you mentioned the zoning and nearby developments. Mm -hmm. I have seen that happen as well where friends of yeah. mine have moved into a neighborhood without checking to see what was planned on that six acres or 10 acres mm -hmm. that was right, you know, half a block down from them or even closer. And next thing you know, there's a big retail center going in there. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to have big lights on all night long and heavy, heavy traffic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic information as always, Jenna. So yeah, very glad you shared this with us. But uh, as always, our time constraints limits how much we can talk about it. <laughs> and you are going to point us to some areas where we might be able to flesh this out some more and learn even uh, more about home buying or other aspects of making good money moves. Yes, absolutely. As always, I encourage our listeners to visit our website at firstalliancecu.com. Get subscribed to our blog. We release new financial tips and advice just like what we shared here today. We do that twice a week. Um, you can also go back and listen to past episodes of this show at firstalliancecu.com slash podcast or on krocnews.com. You can also subscribe to Good Money Moves on Apple, Google, and Spotify podcasts. And if you love our show, please take a minute to leave us a review on your favorite podcasting platform. If you have a financial topic or a question you'd like us to 
cover on Good Money Moves, please send me an email at marketing at firstalliancecu.com. And of course, I strongly encourage you to reach out to our team at First Alliance Credit Union. They are here to help you start making good money moves today. And I know that our mortgage lending team is amazing and they will help you every step of the way through the home buying process. Awesome. That's First Alliance Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA and an equal housing lender. Jenna, thank you so much for all the tips. Of course. The tips on what to avoid, mistakes not to make when buying a home. I appreciate it. I look forward to our next program of Good Money Moves right here on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.